Warning, the following podcast may cause you to question your belief in government, disregard authority, get arrested, be disowned, or deported. Welcome to De Lenda Est Cartago, a curmudgeons.net podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Andy. And I'm your other host, Aaron. We're here to cut through the clutter of some of today's headlines. Today is February 1st, 2014. On this episode of the podcast, we're going to talk about Dick Metcalf and his Guns and Ammo editorial, Chris Christie's Bridge to Nowhere, and the wonderful new Under Armour Lockheed partnership. So I know I'm a little behind on this uh, Dick Metcalf thing since this is the December issue and it's now February, but... Well, I mean, it's not like guns and ammo is like at the top of your reading list. It's not. And sometimes <laughs> it actually gets shoved under the pile of other things. And I, I realized three months later that I missed that uh, edition. So I just happened to open to the back of this one and see a copy of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution on top of a 1911. <clears throat> and a little block below it that says, the fact is all const- constitutional rights are regulated. So, of course, I had to read it. That's the facts. Those are the facts, and, and Dick is sticking to them. <laughs> now, we both uh, don't agree with anything he says in here, right? Correct. Correct. And, there's actually a, a paragraph. Well, there's several paragraphs, but the, there's a lot of words. I don't know. Which one do you want to talk about first? This is Andy's favorite part. <laughs> Note carefully. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped a bit. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the secu- to the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Note carefully, those last four words say, shall not be infringed. They do not say, shall not be regulated. <laughs> well-regulated is, in fact, the initial criterion of the amendment itself. I'm going to have to stop you there. And, uh... I... I... Maybe it's just Dick is not an English major or doesn't understand English. But I don't know how you get from the first part of the sentence to the second part of the sentence and say that one is a criteria for the other. Well, I think he illustrates that as he goes on. I mean, illustrates the idea that he has no idea how to use the English language. (laughs) Nor does he comprehend what the words... That other people use in the English language mean. <laughs> such as? Uh, <laughs> such as infringed and regulate. I'm going to read you the definition for Merriam-Webster's de- definition for regulate. To set or adjust the amount, degree, or rate of. To bring something under the control of authority. Or to make rules or laws that control something. Also, Merriam-Webster, infringe. To do something that does not obey or follow a rule, law, etc. Or to wrongly limit or restrict something, such (laughs) as another person's rights. That's actually in the Merriam-Webster definition. You are not allowed to limit or restrict wrongly. See, this is is where they... Well, yeah, they'll have a little wiggle room. Dick will have a little wiggle Wiggle room. room. No pun intended there. You cannot wrongly limit or restrict, uh, but you can regulate, so you can limit or restrict. Yeah, as long as you're not limiting or restricting when you regulate, which means to limit or restrict, (laughs) then then you're okay. Wrongly. Well, yeah, I mean, (laughs) as long as you're doing it rightly. So basically his whole... The initial premise is bupkis. It's all based around the word wrongly. Yes. That there ought to be, as George Bush said, limits to freedom. (laughs) <laughs> exactly yeah well i mean wait it, he continues right anyone who endorses anything anyone who endorses anything written in the constitution pretty much does admit that oh yeah there should be well that's why i start i was starting to say at the beginning we neither of us agree that the constitution is a guarantee of anything right right yeah we should scrap that thing we really should. <laughs> it's only been used to do bad things Exactly. I, the, okay, so why don't we just skip out of that and just keep the declaration? Mm-hmm. There's there's not a whole lot I find wrong in that. I'm sure if I continue to look closely at it, I'll find, find some things. Find but, something. but compared to the Constitution, it's like a great document. Well, anyway, Dick uh, gives us some illustrations of how things should be regulated. Or actually, how things in his mind currently are regulated. 
um, other uh, amendments. Yes, other amendments. He's he's trying to make some uh, a backstory or or some case law in this case. <laughs> he's an for, a, he's an activist uh, gun rights editor. Exactly. So he's trying to he's trying to lay the path, as it were, toward regulating uh, firearms, and he says. I bring this up because way too many gun owners still seem to believe that regulation of the right to keep and bear arms is an infringement. Yes, Dick. (laughs) Uh, Too many, though. (laughs) Well, wrongly. Wrongly. (laughs) He continues, The fact is, all constitutional rights are regulated, always have been, and need to be. Oh. What? Does that bother you? (laughs) Or else, I, you know, it would have been a more interesting article if he had finished that sentence and elaborated on that point. They need to be, or else there might be uh, anarchy, anarchy in, the, <laughs> in the streets. People, mobs running up and down the street, killing each other. And... Right, because if you look at Merriam-Webster for the words anarchy and chaos, they also mean exactly the same thing. <laughs> uh, wait, no, that's, that's wrong. There's something wrong there. All right, so, okay, Dick goes on. Freedom of speech is regulated. You cannot falsely and deliberately shout fire in a crowded theater. I'm going to stop you right there. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that was only after an activist judge decided that you could not yell fire in a crowded theater. Exactly. Because right. that isn't covered under the First Amendment. Exactly. So, is, Agreed. Is this a circular argument? Um, it's against the law because it's against the law. In addition... If the activist judge hadn't done that, theater owners <laughs> would just make rules for their property where you couldn't yell fire if you, when there wasn't a fire. If you yell fire in my theater, I will never let you back in here again. Right. And I may sue you for the damage done to my carpets and my upholstery as people stampeded out, the yeah. deaths you know, the deaths of people. Yeah. And- I, I don't think that you need a law to say that the person who yelled fire is somehow responsible for the resulting actions i'd really like to research this one because you know this is like lots of other laws this happened like one time <laughs> oh i'm sure 200 years ago exactly. or what, you know whenever the first theater <laughs> was open and <laughs> some little kid he's like 13 he's like, like i wonder what daddy why is there fire in those candles fire <laughs> <laughs> all right well i think we've we've dealt with that the next line freedom <laughs> this is a good one Freedom of religion is regulated. A church cannot practice human <laughs> sacrifice. I love this one, actually. So, I, I, we were talking about this earlier, and we mentioned that it's just possible that murder, which, which human sacrifice is, <laughs> so murder is also something that's not protected. <laughs> you don't have any right to murder. No, I, so, that's one of the amendments, the right to murder. Oh, really? Yes, it's just, it's preempted by the... I would have used that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so if it weren't for <sighs> this uh, amendment, we would not be able, we would be allowed to go murder each other in church. Now, as it is stands that you yeah. may murder someone outside of a church. Possibly. Because it's protected, but right, not inside the church. Right. Well, uh, maybe murders are, are allowed just not... In a religious setting. No, that's right. I don't think you have to be in a church. What if you're like, they do baptisms at ponds and stuff. So you could like go and murder people there. <laughs> don't think? Think I, I'm, I'm, I'll hold his head under. We're having a quote unquote baptism. <laughs> Why is he For all you people we don't like. <laughs> so yeah, we're pretty sure that it's not the, the fact that freedom of religion is regulated. It's just that the other laws still apply alongside of the freedom of religion. Uh, going right along, freedom of assembly is regulated. People who don't like you can't gather and can't gather an anti-you demonstration on your front lawn without your permission. I'm going to stop you there again. <laughs> Isn't this really a private property? <laughs> well, what's sad is he even admits that because he says without, without your, your permission. permission. <laughs> so he's saying my argument sucks. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's what he's that's saying. Right. I, there's, yeah. there's no more. He, to he's that. just admitting it. You know, it is private property, and on top of that, I'm not so sure that they don't have a right to have an anti-U demonstration on the sidewalk in front of your in house. front of your house. In fact, I'm positive that they could do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I still don't understand his point. 
If they want to park their cares? news van in front of my house right. and take pictures of me through my windows, they certainly can. His argument is is the same no matter whether it's an anti-U demonstration or whether it's any other kind of gathering, right? Right. What does that... Now, I will say, they have done things to make the freedom of assembly um, illegal in some, in mm-hmm. some circumstances. Um... I won't argue with that. I don't know that it's regulated. But it's actually usually in public settings that it's difficult to gather, right? It's not not that they've somehow regulated it toward private property. It's, like you said, it's almost always in public property. And not that I'm a huge fan of the police, but if you call them and said, there's a large mob on my front lawn, (laughs) right? The guy's not going to go... Oh, well, that is a violation of one of the amendments for sure. <laughs> and I'd also like to ask Mr. Metcalf if he actually thinks these uh, these protesting prisons, I, I like to call them, that they've set up now where we have free speech in a designated area. <laughs> Inside the cage. Does he think that's a positive thing for free speech and for the rights of, asse- of assembly? Well, as he says at the beginning, some rights need to be regulated. <laughs> yeah, well, he probably does agree with that because he doesn't want people who he disagrees with to be able to say anything about him so we would be in the free speech we zone. should stop doing this right now <laughs> dick might be angry he's angry you don't want to make dick angry <laughs> that's for sure all right there's one last little bit here <laughs> this this actually might be my favorite of all these horrible examples and it is illegal for convicted felons or the cl- clinically insane to keep and bear arms We don't have a crickets button, so we were just pausing. <laughs> but this is a critique of our prison system, right? Because we send people to to jail, and we're going to rehabilitate them, and then release them from prison, and restore their rights. Oh, wait. Why would we restore their rights when we can take away their rights permanently? It's also- if we really believe in rehabilitation in, the, in these prison situations then maybe we should give them back their rights. Well, you and I both know the prison system is not about rehabilitating anyone. Well, but that's the whole point. And and if it's not, then why would they ever let them out of prison either? <laughs> it's it, just it, it's, it's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. This also is not an argument for what he proposes at the beginning, right? You can't right. say it's illegal for this to happen as a reason why it should be illegal for this to happen, right? Right. Again, these aren't regulations of a law. These are laws that run concurrent. Right. <laughs> so, at the end of that, I hope we've we've revealed revealed. It's it's obvious. It's I don't know how you revealed anything. Well, it. it I it, hope we've pointed out that Dick Metcalf knows nothing. <laughs> I think that much is there's, clear. There's a few things here. Dick, Met, Dick Metcalf knows nothing. Can't form a coherent argument. Obviously. Yeah. And. I wonder if the readers of Guns and Ammo, how much they followed of that, or if they just read the little block that said he wants to take away their guns. And yeah, they probably just got angry. And just and got angry. Closed the magazine. But so guns. Or they a- skipped over this because it's the last page in the, it in is. the book before you get to the the uh, ad for Ammo in the back. But so Dick, uh, Guns and Ammo did fire him for writing this, which I think is also the most hypocritical thing ever. <laughs> Because did someone not read it first? Are you <laughs> serious? They really fired him? Yeah. I didn't well, know I'm that. sorry. They didn't fire him. He stepped down. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, but yeah, he, he's gone now. This was December. It's February. Oh, and my goodness. I had no he's idea. He's no longer writing for I them. Know. So Fantastic. it's a little hypocritical for you to publish his op-ed, basically. And then turn around and fire him. And be him. like, you know, this is, this is outrageous. I can't believe he said that in my magazine that I printed and published and... Well, they probably paid didn't. him for they, it. They probably didn't know. They probably didn't read it. <laughs> oh, Dick's just mailing it in again. <laughs> in a, you wonder if all of this. You you think there'd be like a flag in the computer uh, at Guns N' Ammo? Anywhere where the word "limit" is found 
in the same sentence or paragraph as constitution or, yeah, or yeah, guns. Exactly. Right? Right. They'd be like, yeah. hey, Dick, uh, I just want to make sure I understood what you were writing here. It's yeah. unclear to me. Uh, we noticed that the words limit and regulate were in your article. <laughs> Could you explain to us why they would ever appear in this magazine? Well, on the other hand, this is not at all surprising from this this crowd i'll say this is something that could easily have been written by wayne lapierre at the nra because while on the one hand he says one thing on the other hand you know maybe he probably wouldn't actually write an article it wouldn't go this far right but he would write laws that meant the same thing and get them pushed through and push for federal and state programs to limit guns and gun rights and so forth so agreed agreed and, and so at the end dick metcalf is actually just being a little more honest this is actually what he thinks you know yeah, yeah, that's I, that. I certainly see your point there. I like how he ends this. My favorite thing about this is how he ends the article. <laughs> it ends with the the words, "But that's just me," and an ellipsis. <laughs> so, I'd like to say to Dick, "Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it is just, just you. No, just no one else would come up with this kind of infantile <laughs> argumentation." <laughs> But that's not true either, because they have and will continue to do so. We will attempt not to do that. I noticed, it, I just got the most recent edition, and they have not filled this space yet with commentary. It's now just, like, old pictures from previous, uh, like, 1960s Guns and Ammo, <laughs> like, retro pictures and stuff. My next question, is this guy, like, an ex-cop? You know, I didn't do any research on him. Yeah. He's been writing for about 437 years, though, so... Maybe he just went senile. Yeah. Is he an editor for that? I... Who cares? No one cares. No one cares. We need to. Well, turns out we do care a little more about Mr. Metcalf. Uh, a little research uh, on Wikipedia. Very little. <laughs> Extremely little. This is, after all, the same podcast you've been listening to. Uh, w- Wikipedia has a great paragraph on this. Uh, they say, in November 2013... Metcalf was fired from Guns and Ammo after a column he wrote on what he felt were appropriate limits to Second Amendment rights became controversial, and sponsors of the magazine threatened to withdraw funding. Before Metcalf's dismissal, the article had been praised by the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence. The firing was criticized by a variety of publications, including conservative and pro-gun rights periodicals such as National Review. (laughs) I, 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 think, I can't continue without laughing. I think it makes my point from earlier about uh, the NRA. It certainly does. Well, and the thing is, we all know the National Review was a front for the CIA for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. So, no big surprise there. But what, what kills me is the flip-flop, I'm going to be on whatever side is convenient to me at the moment. Like sponsors want to withdraw i'm sure it's the, all the guys that want to sell guns mm-hmm. fantastic great then people protest it and it's these front groups for government <laughs> interests that want the regulation that seems so odd to That's me so strange you think dick just took a bullet for the you know it's like sure seems like it doesn't it like, i'm at the end of oh, a long career sure i'll write that. i'm really tired of writing this crap for this magazine <laughs> <laughs> the last one goes to the highest bidder <laughs> cia has plenty of money <laughs> exactly right well oh. <laughs> see i almost didn't bring this up the cast sunstein thing so he came out recently uh, with an article that discussed for quite a long time paranoid libertarians Oh. That would be pretty much us. It's an accurate description. <laughs> I'm not of us. a libertarian. I'm not either. But he seems to think that those of us who just don't like the government, which yeah. we just don't like the mm-hmm. government, uh, are paranoid libertarians. Oh. He doesn't. I well, guess he doesn't understand. He's probably so leftist that he only understands the leftist side of anarchy. Yes. Which is really just revolution for revolution's sake. Right. Lots of bloodshed and violence. And... Right. So we can install another regime that's going to do the same thing, and then eventually we'll have to have another revolution and do the same thing all over again. Uh-huh. So he thinks that, that that anarchists are just those people. The rest of us are libertarians, but now there's a subgroup of lo- libertarians of the real crazies who are paranoid libertarians. <laughs> that's a very convenient box to be able to put people in. <laughs> so what I like now is I'm, you know, more and more you see as you read all this stuff, 
you know, everyone was becoming a libertarian. Remember, I, I told you, we, I even saw somebody called yep. Sean Hannity a libertarian. Yep. Everybody, Sean Hannity is like nothing near a libertarian. I started to write a We're book. not libertarians, and <laughs> he's still not even a libertarian. But I love how both sides now are, they're realizing, oh no, Obama finally recognized it. Oh, I don't know about people and their mistrust of the government. That's the worst <laughs> thing that could happen. You know, now Sunstein comes out with this article. You have articles by this jackass, Metcalf, mm-hmm. pro-government. I don't care how you want to phrase it like for him. It's pro-government. I love that both sides are now back to the, oh, crap, things have gone a little too far. We need to rein this in a little bit. Yeah, It's convenient when the other side is getting hammered. But now, now that both, both getting, sides are getting hammered, it's like, oh, Well, which crap. is also why we're way off Guns and Ammo here, but also why it's... <laughs> <laughs> why you now want to label guys like Sean Hannity as libertarians. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Right, because then, right now, we we're going to say there's the, libertarians and paranoid there's, libertarians. There's but eventually, libertarians. it's going to be, oh, that's Sean Hannity. He's a libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then it's, you know, we can... We can pigeonhole him, which I'm fine with Sean Hannity being pigeonholed. Well, no, that's not true. I'm not fine with anyone being pigeonholed as far as their right to say what they think. However... Well, they can also control the conversation as to what right. libertarianism is, right? If Sean Hannity's right. a libertarian, then yeah. now we can... If Sean Hannity's a libertarian... Right. And we would argue, if Sean Hannity is a libertarian, <laughs> is then the, what is there what is, is no libertarian. What is past anarchy? anarchy? Because I need to go yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Well, this this always comes up with, for me because... I always run into the whole evangelical thing, too. I don't want anyone ever referring to me as an evangelical. Because so many people have ruined... The word. The, right. That you can't even be associated with it now. Not, not that not I... Not in the biblical sense. Right. Or, yeah, or, exactly. The... Do I believe in evangelism? Yes. I don't know what evangelical means. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it means anything Protestant. Whether it's speaking in tongues or whether it's, you know being a baptist I'm, I'm not sure or a republican well that's what the most majority of baptists are <laughs> unless you live in the south and then you are a democrat but you pretend to be a republican <laughs> all right enough on dick metcalf yeah for the second time enough yep. on dick, dick metcalf and asso- associated matters all right so i i titled this next one chris christie's bridge to nowhere no he didn't he didn't do it he had no idea <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about i live in new jersey <laughs> And I think uh, as of last night, his bestest friend in the world from kindergarten is now like, I have documentation that I hid in a safe deposit box to prove (laughs) that he knew everything about this. So if you're planning on having me killed, you know, this will be released three days after my death, you know, that kind of thing. I'm actually a little nervous that I won't be able on Monday morning to get across the Delaware Memorial. (laughs) It's going to be shut down for some reason. This podcast got released and... Oh, he's not going to work. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna wall the whole state off. <laughs> well, would it surprise every you? bridge? I, I, look, he's the type to do that, though, right? Oh, he is. He's so uh, he's so, arid, he's so egotistical. <laughs> oh, New Jersey no longer needs you. We will be shutting down all bridges. This this to me is a non-story ever since it started. Okay. A politician using his power to hurt someone else, especially one of his opponents. It, it's surprising that we don't hear about it like 47 times a day, right? Right, right. Well, and the great thing is, remember what, well, you probably don't know because no one knows what Chris Christie was before, you know, 20 minutes ago when he became the governor. That's right. But he fought corruption in the state of New Jersey as a U.S. attorney for years and years and years. <laughs> He's a lawyer? I'm shocked. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and he fought corruption. He fought corruption. Yeah. Yeah. So you mean he learned about corruption so he could use it later in his political career? <laughs> like he got inserted into the system. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that guy, he's putting too many people in jail that we like, that are we're friends with, that are my brother. And his brother. <laughs> we should probably, like, co-opt him into this. You think it'll be hard? You want to be the governor? No. Oh, oh, done. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked your comment oh. way past this. So let's say yeah. Chris Christie's done as a, which I never thought he was a viable candidate. Well, anyway, but... you're going to have the same thing where you... Okay, if he was up, would any of the Baptists vote for him? I don't think so. No. no. So, well, no, I think his whole uh he's 20, I shouldn't say know. that. I'm sorry, Baptists. 
would any you can't rephrase that of the Republican <laughs> base, the real conservative Republican we're, base. We're speaking in euphemisms. euphemisms from would now. would they vote for him? I I think the whole is he viable? All that stuff was all the left anyway. Oh, like, yeah. Well, yeah. why wouldn't you put this guy on? Right. He's going to vote for him. Yeah. Uh, but let's say he's done now. Your comment was this makes Rand Paul <laughs> viable makes, again. Yes, <laughs> of course it does. Right? What took sure. what, what took Rand out of the limelight? Uh, he said something about something that somebody didn't like. I don't remember. Well, there was that, and then there was also the guy that he hired as a speechwriter or an advisor or something that had been some kind of quote unquote neo confederate. There's always yeah. There's always <laughs> you know? that. So well, he's related to uh, his father, <laughs> right? Who's re- who knows all those other neo confederates right, like right. Lou Rockwell and so yeah, forth, right? Yeah. So. I don't know if this makes Rand viable again. I, I don't really think so. Um, I think it does. Yeah? They don't have any options left. Who else is there? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, who else has been put out there is... I, they, I, no one. They have no one. I, I can't see it. Now you go to... Well, what's your next tier? You've got uh, Bobby Jindal from Louisiana. Who? <laughs> he's a he's the governor of Louisiana. Who? They say every 4 years he's going to run. Right. He's going to be president cuz he's Indian and a Republican. Yeah. Okay. Uh how about uh Ben Carter? There you go. I don't even know who that is. There you go. Who's Ben? He's the black doctor that they're oh, yes. they're now holding up, right? He's yes. the new uh Herman McCain. Yes. Right? Herman McCain. Was it McCain? Herman, Herman McCain. <laughs> Herman. <laughs> yeah, Herman. That, that was a Freudian slip. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Are you trying to say that those two people are the same person? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> no. Uh, Herman was a lot more honest and open mm. about what he thought. True, true. Um, he well, wasn't capable look. of forming a coherent lie. <laughs> <laughs> this is why well, he and McCain gets so distracted when he's murdering hobos <laughs> that he just doesn't know what to say. That's okay? right. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Rand Mayor. Uh, we should say now, I don't actually believe that John McCain murders hobo- hobos. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I do. But it doesn't matter. We didn't say it. It was a joke. Anyway, Rand Paul. Murder hobos. I don't care. Go ahead. Do it. <laughs> it may or may not be viable. <laughs> but Oh, yes. This was the real kicker. The real kicker is not Rand, because we already know he's, he's not a libertarian. He's yeah. not a... He doesn't love... Freedom. A couple months ago, we com- we complained about something, um, namely Ron Paul saying, "Oh, hey, yeah, if you do, if you're like Bradley Manning and they've been torturing you for months and months mm. and months, oh, yeah, well, you should expect prison." Yeah, and you know that's fine. Well, that bugged us. The next thing is, even though his son has become essentially a neocon, mm-hmm. now it looks like Ron Paul's going to take all his leftover campaign money and just. I don't know. Give it to Rand. Yeah, he's not technically allowed to give it to Rand, but he is allowed to give it all to a super PAC, which we'll give which it to. We'll Rand. give it to Rand, right? So, yeah, that is uh, it's kind of a poke in the eye. It's disconcerting. Anybody who least. supported him, I don't even know where to go with that. I still like Ron. I, I do too. I wish he would just stick to saying what he believes and disassociate. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's got to be, we've said he this before, say, it's, it's got to be tough, right? Yeah, he's but, your son. But, but. You, but you can say, he's my son, I support him. Doesn't mean you have to say, I, I think he should be the next president. Right. Or, I think he's certainly a viable candidate. <laughs> which was complete BS. Yes, compared to everyone else. Yes, compared to Hillary Clinton. Yeah, he's a viable ca- candidate. No kidding. Yeah, it's funny. Rand is so lackluster anyway. No one is going to show up to see him speak anywhere or to go to a rap. I mean, who was the last president elected out of Kentucky? <laughs> is this a trick question? <laughs> yes. The trick is that I don't know the answer. But, the, but there's a reason I don't know the answer because there probably, there probably never was wasn't one. one. Yeah. We'll research that later. Yeah. So I happened to be driving home from work one day and I have that bad habit of listening to NPR every once in a while. <laughs> And this story was on, and 
uh, I was laughing so hard that I, <laughs> I almost swerved off the road. <laughs> but I had to, I had to share this one. This is great, and this is with the Olympics coming up. The title of this story is "Will Team USA's High Tech Speed Skating Suit Pay Off in Gold?" This is all about. It's not really advocating to use gold as a <laughs> currency any longer, no. but it, nor is it advocating to use gold as a speed skating suit. That, would, <laughs> that could be will confusing. not win you gold. This is about the uh, partnership between the government agency known as Lockheed Martin <laughs> <laughs> I like how you and go. the. Semi-government agency Under Armour, who provides all of the uniforms for the pro-military NFL, and probably soldiers too at this point, right? They probably uh, would not surprise t-shirts me. and all that stuff. Yeah. Thirty-seven dollars for a t-shirt. They take off the U and so Lockheed Defense, as it even says here, defense contractor Lockheed Martin and sporting goods company Under Armour. <laughs> Uh, released photos of the suit. This is a speed skating suit they're calling Mach 39. Apparently being an engineer doesn't qualify you to not be an idiot. No, that's right. <laughs> this suit is special because it has dimples like a golf ball. No, no, they're bumps, not An- they're dimples. Anti- I'm sorry, they're anti-dimples. <laughs> anti-dimples, yeah. <laughs> golf balls fly further because of the dimples. Speed skating suits go faster because of because the, of the anti- anti-dimples. I, I just thought I'm confused. this was interesting <laughs> because of the partnership, because Lockheed Martin is known for doing things like building drones that, you know, murder people from... And bombs. Bombs. Missiles. And, and all kinds of other... Planes. Awful things. Planes that kill people. So, Basically, they're known for making things that kill people. So, the question is, will this suit, is it really designed to, like, kill people? Oh, I never thought about that. It is in Russia. <laughs> the right. Olympics this year are in Russia. so Our arch enemy, Russia. <laughs> yes, yep. Uh, second to Mongolia, we discovered <laughs> earlier today. Well, Mongolia sits right in between China and Russia, so... They've got to be... The double, evil has to be compounded. Double evil. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I actually watched the Olympics. And it's disturbing that I do. But it's entertainment, right? It is entertainment, but you can no longer give me a hard time about watching the NFL. Oh, that's not true. (laughs) Uh, The Olympics, believe it or not, even the Olympics doesn't worship the military the way the NFL does. That is true. I'll give you that one. I mean, it's sad. It it is nationalistic, though. That's certainly nationalistic. Uber nationalistic. But I take it in this way. When I'm watching, I'm rooting for the person performing and quite often, I don't root for the American. <laughs> uh, that is, it's the same with me. But it's still, we have to have the flag. You know, it, it's no, never... I, the, I get that it's, it's never, all patriotic. You know, the guy's and... name. It's always the speed skater from, you know, whatever country. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. Yeah. Oh, you hate those Koreans. They might win the gold. The, the fact that... Every morning, afternoon, and night, you will see the table with the medal count, <laughs> yes. right? And is the We're US... still kicking Russia's ass. <laughs> We've got 12 golds to their 37, but we have 105 silvers to their 11. And <laughs> right. somehow the math will work out that the USA there's, wins. There's still time. Right. Yes. The <laughs> USA has to win the Olympics. Yeah. Which, like, exactly. Well, I thought this was all about finding the best athletes and letting people compete in a spirit of goodwill and peace and... <laughs> You're just silly now. I'm just, I'm just saying what they would say. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Again, the hypocrisy. Yeah. So I've noticed in the last few Olympics that these costumes that they wear, there's been this ongoing theme, and <laughs> we promise we will t- put the picture up here because there's some sort of crotch light <laughs> built into this suit where when you look at this, the the guy that they had the picture of. You can't really focus on anything but his crotch. There's like this circle at his crotch area that's built into the suit for some unknown reason. I, th- I think we ought to to uh, send a note to Lockheed and Under Armour and just let them know. I'm not sure you're aware, but it looks like you may have accidentally put a giant light on the guy's crotch in this picture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Like, But this is a trend. It is a trend. I've seen it in the, in the last few Olympics. 
And I don't... Everybody's doing it. So other countries have it as well. The, the one non-revolutionary thing about this is that it's got a crotch like <laughs> The other thing that I notice about this is somehow this guy looks like Spider-Man. <laughs> and probably why I'm not a big fan of the Spider-Man movies. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that makes sense. Plus that awful guy's in it. Uh, what's his name? That Terrible guy. Horrible actor. Mm-hmm. Toby? Even, Toby? Toby. Toby? Toby. Mm-hmm. Hey, Toby. You're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and you also look like you're participating in the Olympics for the USA. 